Hello everyone, David here. I wanted to convert some of my old VHS tapes to digital files recently, and I realised I don't have any of the equipment to do it. We got rid of our VHS player years ago, and I really didn't want to pay hundreds of pounds for some kind of service to do it for me. So I found a way to do it on a shoestring budget. I spent about £25 on dongles all in all, and all the software is free. Let me show you what I did. First, you'll need an actual VHS player. I went on Nextdoor and posted a question just asking if I could borrow one. Fortunately, a nice couple messaged me a few hours later saying I could borrow theirs for a few weeks. But if you don't or can't go this route yourself, you could buy one from eBay, then resell it once you're done, or try Freebay or Gumtree. But be careful about giving out your personal details online, don't share your address publicly, and don't go to meet anyone alone. Be internet smart, basically. Now, I'm going to assume you want to record this on a PC or Mac, so you'll want some kind of USB capture device, like this one. Take a look at the back of your VCR and check what video outputs it has. Mine has SCART and RF, radio frequency. I don't want to have to bother tuning in the signal, so I'll use the SCART connection. Your options might include composite or S-video. Generally, you want to prefer HDMI, if by some miracle your VCR supports it, then SCART, S-video, and finally composite. I already have this HDMI capture dongle, so I bought a SCART to HDMI converter cable from Amazon for just over £10. The bonus is I can also hook up the VCR to my TV that way. But you can buy an all-in-one dongle if that's simpler to go straight from the VCR to your computer. If you want to spend the extra money, more like £50, get one that will capture the interlaced field separately. Then you can de-interlace it yourself for improved smoothness and picture quality. I'm not going to go over manually de-interlacing in this video. I'll assume we're keeping it very cheap and cheerful with the dongle doing most of the work of deinterlacing. But check out this video on it if you want to go the extra mile. Now we can start connecting everything up. VHS player to the mains, obviously, then connect your various dongles. A converter might need USB power like mine, so find a spare plug on your PC or some other USB power source nearby. Plug your USB capture device to your PC and we're nearly ready. Download OBS and create a new scene. Go to settings in the bottom right and go to the video section. Now you kind of have two options. Record and process the video afterwards to clean it up, which is my preferred approach, or record straight to your final file, which will save you some time. If you want to do the cleanup later, I suggest you record at 1080p or whatever the maximum output of your USB dongle provides. So set the base and output resolution to 1920 by 1080 and the FPS to either 25 if you're recording PAL or 30 for NTSC. Check out this handy chart if you're not sure which region you are. If you are recording the deinterlaced field separately, you double the FPS to either 50 or 60, but my dongle doesn't support that, so I'll keep it at the base values. By the way, if you're not sure whether your equipment will record the separate deinterlaced fields or not, record a test clip at 50 or 60 FPS, then open it up in VLC player. Find somewhere in the clip with lots of motion and repeatedly press E on the keyboard. If the picture changes every time you press E, congratulations, you can record at a higher frame rate. If it doesn't, commiserations, and you may as well set the FPS to 25 or 30. If you just want to YOLO this thing and record straight to your final file, set the resolution to whatever is native for the TV signal appropriate to you. 768 by 576 for PAL, or 640 by 480 for NTSC. Either way, then go to the Output tab, and under Recording, select the quality you want to go for. I put mine at Indistinguishable, which is really good, and because I have a beefy graphics card, I've set it to record AV1 in hardware, which is a very efficient new codec. But you could choose H.264 or HEVC if that's an option. Otherwise, X.264 in software is still fine. I like to record straight to MP4 as it's more compatible with other programs, but you can record to MKV or other formats if you know you need them. I like the cleanest source possible, but if you're making long recordings and want to save space, you can lower the quality. Add a video capture device source and make sure it's set to your USB dongle. 
Here's where you could set some deinterlacing options if you're doing that. Make sure the source window fills the canvas and stick in a tape and get it playing so we can see if anything's coming through. If it's working, you should see a picture in OBS. Now, if you are recording to a 1920 by 1080 canvas, you might notice it's the wrong aspect ratio. TV in the 90s was typically 4x3, whereas my dongle at least outputs a native 16x9. But don't worry, we'll fix all of this later. If you want to hear what's playing as well, go to these three dots in the audio mixer next to the video capture device audio source and click on advanced audio properties. Under audio monitoring, change it to monitor and output. If you want to just record it in silence, for example, you want to convert hours of video in the background while you're still using your PC, keep it to monitor off. And when you're ready, hit start recording in OBS and play your tape. Stop it when you're done and you should have an MP4 of your VHS tape now. If you opted to one-shot this whole thing without any more processing, you're done. But if you're like me and you want to tweak the file a bit further, watch on. You could use a few different editors to process this video, but I recommend DaVinci Resolve. The free version has loads of features and it's a good way to learn the software in case you want to get serious with it and pay for the studio version later. It's what I use to edit all my YouTube videos. Create a new project and drag your recorded file into it. By the way, if you were hardcore and picked the lossless option in OBS, Resolve won't want to import the file, but you can convert it. There are a few ways to do it, but the easiest is probably to download FFmpeg. Then open a command window and type this command. It will convert the OBS codec to FFV1 in an MKV container, and you'll be able to drag that into Resolve. It's also lossless, so we haven't dropped any quality doing this. Once you've imported your clip, click Yes when asked if you want to change the project frame rate to match. You'll want to change your timeline to a 4x3 aspect ratio, so right-click it in the Media Pool window and change the resolution to Custom. 1440 by 1080 is probably overkill, but I like to preserve the quality of the source as much as possible. Depending what processing the dongle did to the VCR's output, I think it's best to keep it at 1080p, but you can quite reasonably downsize it more to the matching PAL or NTSC resolutions if you want. To stretch your video to the correct aspect ratio, untick the lock on the zoom settings of the video clip and set the Y zoom to 1.333. You should now have a nicely filled frame with no black bars. Trim the video if you need to, so your new file has a nice clean start and end. If you notice the audio is out of sync, right click on the clip in the timeline and untick the link option. Then press T on your keyboard and slide the audio left or right until it matches up perfectly. You might be lucky enough to have perfect sync from the bat, but if not, that's the easiest way to fix it. If it won't move in either direction, you might need to trim the clip first at the beginning or end so it has some wiggle room. Here's where you could do some more processing like upscaling, tweaking the colors, or try some restoration, but that's a good topic for another video, I think. Go to the Deliver tab at the bottom and render your file. I like H.264 Master and to save as an AV1 MP4. Congratulations, you now have a nice digitized file from your VHS tape. You can now delete that original source file you recorded with OBS if you want to save some space, or just keep it in case you want to remaster it in the future with better tools. Now, there are higher quality ways to do this if you want the absolute best preservation possible. Not all VHS players are created equal, and an expensive digitization service probably has the best ones. There are more expensive converters that will give you fine grain control of the deinterlacing and scaling. But if you're like me and you just want to archive some old footage and have control over the format yourself, this is a pretty good solution for not much money. I've enjoyed a trip down memory lane. The presentation and feeling of TV in the 90s was somehow different, or maybe I was different. Either way, it's fun to look back and experience it again. If you follow this guide and convert some footage yourself, I'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments section. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If so, please leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. See you next time.